Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews and another horror movie night. Tonight I will be reviewing Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning, released in 1985. Friday the 13th, Part 5 stars Melanie Kinneman, John Shepard, Corey Feldman, Shavar Ross, Richard Young, Dick Weand, Marco St. John, Tiffany Helm, Juliet Cummins, Debbie Sue Voorhees, Miguel A. Nunez, Corey Parker, Carol Cattle, Ron Sloan, and Tom Morga. Friday the 13th Part 5 was directed by Danny Steinman. Now this one, um, it's based on a script um, written by Danny Steinman, along with Martin Katoser and David Cohen. And uh, you can tell that Martin Katoser and David Cohen were the ones that did most of the script writing on this, and then... Danny Steinman, as a director, you know, went ahead and just went in and just did little rewrites that he wanted to do as a kind of a director that likes to do rewrites on his stuff. Um, I mentioned Danny Steinman in a previous review of mine, which was for um, Savage Streets. Um, and this one is a totally different type of film than that one because, I mean, Danny Steinman just goes um, completely batshit crazy in this film. I mean, this is one of the more uh, goofy and kind of fun, you know, um, Friday the 13th films. It's not to be taken seriously for sure. Um the uh, cast is good in it for what it's worth. They are doing well with the uh, goofily written characters in this. Um, now, Melanie Kinnaman and um, Richard Young, I have to point out that these two just feel like they feel like they're in a different movie. Um, because everybody else, well, I guess John Shepard could be the same as uh, Tommy Jarvis. But Melanie's Pam and uh, Richard Young's uh, Matthew um, are such dramatic and serious, you know, characters in this thing that, you know, the rest of the cast around them that are completely off the wall goofy characters, uh, including my favorite of, of all uh, Friday the 13th characters, Ethel. Carol Cattle was, um, my God, this, this woman was hilarious in this film. I don't know what those two perverts were doing in my yard. Say it like you mean it, Ma. Would you shut the fuck up? Uh, and, you know, her, her goofy-ass son, Junior, uh, played by um, Ron Sloan. Big dildo. Eat your fucking slop. Um, who, ironically, Ron Sloan, uh, in more recent years, has gotten a lot of work um, playing in um, not only uh, independent um, films playing characters in them, but also playing in a lot of fan film stuff and everything. He was in uh, Debbie Sue Voorhees' 13 Fanboy. And uh, and he was just recently in uh, Dylan's New Nightmare. Um, so um, he's he's gotten a whole new lease on life recently. You know, for a while, you know, you never saw him after this film. Um, but yeah, he was he was a little little too goofy to me. Uh, whereas Ethel was just 
a fun goofy. Um, but they did work well off of each other, I guess, if you, if you, you know. But, um, the character of, uh, Miguel A. Nunez's, uh, Damon was just a fun character. Um, I loved his character. It just sucked. He was in just one fucking scene and then they kill him off. I mean, he was so good in this. I like uh, Miguel A. Nunez anyway. I mean, he he was he was great in this. He was great in um, a role that he played in um, one of the Lethal Weapon movies. I think he played in two Lethal Weapon movies, but um, I'm not gonna quote. Don't quote me on that one. Um, and then, of course, you know, he was he was uh, really good in uh, Return of the Living Dead. So. Uh, I've always liked him as an actor. Um, I don't think he gets enough uh, little parts and stuff and stuff. But as I was saying, um, Melanie Kinnaman and Richard Young, they just, they are so good and so serious in their roles that they, they just seem out of place in this film with all these other off-the-wall goofy characters. Um, Richard Young... Uh, ironically, played the inspiration for Indiana Jones in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. He's the one that takes off the hat and puts it on young Indy, River Phoenix, in the film. You lost today, kid. But it doesn't mean you have to like it. And uh, I really liked him as an actor in both this and uh, Last Crusade, and you know, I don't think I've ever seen him in hardly anything else. And that really sucks, because I really kind of like his um, style. He's really likable in, in the things he's in. Even in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, he was he was playing a supposed bad guy, but he was likable in the role. Um, so, um, him in this, he is so good alongside Melanie Kinnaman as Pam. And, uh, you know, every other character in this is just to totally, you know, like they're in a different movie um, than these two. Um, it really did piss me off, though, the way that they did um, Richard Young's Matthew, though. Because um, I think he was a very interesting character, and I wanted to see more with him. And instead, they, Danny Steinman just decided to just kill him off screen. And uh, I think that sucked. Um, because I think they could have done a lot more with him. He should have been like a good heroic character um, trying to help Pam in the film. Um, but... No, that wasn't meant to be. Now, in this film, Jason is not the killer. Spoiler alert. Um, and the killer is a paramedic who has gone insane named Roy Burns. And uh, this is only like the uh, second time that a killer in this film series um, is played by two different actors. Now, you could argue that this is three because Pamela Voorhees in the original film was most likely not played by Betsy Palmer throughout that film. So, um, I highly doubt she was around during any of those scenes for the stalking scenes where you're actually seeing the body or the feet or anything of the character of Pamela. Um... But I'll let that one slide, you know, whatever, um, as it was the first. But in Friday the 13th Part 2, you had Steve Dash playing Jason while he was masked throughout the film. And then, of course, near the end, when he's unmasked and comes through the glass, it's played by Warrington Gillette. Um, but this is the only time where um, a character is played unmasked in multiple scenes by one actor and then masked he's played by the same actor 
in all of the other scenes as the masked version of the character. Because in this one, Dick Weand plays the character of Roy Burns, the paramedic, and in all of his scenes, he's played by him. And then when he's masked as the killer, the wannabe Jason, he's played by Tom Morga, who uh, ironically also played um, the dream Jason that Tommy Jarvis, John Shepard, sees throughout the film. So, um, another character that I kind of uh, liked, he is still kind of off the wall and everything, um, and, and fun and goofy in a way, but, you know, like I said, if, if, if Pam and Matthew had been more quirky and fun and everything, this, this movie might have, might not have been so off, you know, um, but I liked Marco St. John as, uh, Sheriff Tucker. He was pretty fun, interesting sheriff in here. Um, I really love the scene with him and the mayor. His body was cremated. He's nothing but a handful of ash. You know that for sure, Mayor? Were you there? Did you see him cremated? Jason Voorhees. Yeah. I can't believe this. Here. This is your Jason Voorhees here. This. So, um, overall, um... I think Friday the 13th Part 5 gets shit on by a lot of fans as being a horrible film, um, which I don't agree with. I, I still think it's it's not the best of the Friday the 13th films by any stretch of the imagination, um, but it is definitely not the worst of this series. Um, so, I will give this film... I will give this one a 7.9 out of 10. Um, like I said, I mean, it it's just inconsistent to me. I mean, if Danny Steinman had directed this thing more like he did Savage Streets and made it more just, you know, consistent with the performances, um, it would have been a better film, I think. Um, but the way it is, I mean, you've got, you know, Pam is up here, you know, you got <laughs> Marco St. John as the sheriff is, is just crazy here, you know, and then, then you got, you know, um, like I said, Matthew is up here, you know, he's just straight up, you know, serious, you know, and everything. And everybody else is down here just in the crazy area, you know, and it's, you know, it's, just such an inconsistent film, unfortunately. Um, and uh, John Shepard, I, I just don't think he brings much to the part of Tommy Jarvis, um, unfortunately. Um, but we did get the uh, nice little cameo by uh, Corey Feldman playing the Tommy Jarvis at 12 years old during the opening little sequence. Um, so that, that was nice. Um, but yeah. Um, what do you guys think of this film? Do you agree with my review on this one? Do you disagree? Let me know in those comments down below. And as usual, if you like this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified about future videos. And don't forget to hit that join button that you see up here and also on my uh, main channel page. Um, that way you can become a member, a Dark Knight fan. Um, and uh, to find out what you get from that, being a member, uh, just click on uh, join right now and uh, you will get all the info. Alright, but anyway... Hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you will join me tomorrow for another Dark Knight Films Night. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.